Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I'm back. Yes, I am feeling better. Uh, just occasionally I'm coughing once in a while, but uh, feeling pretty good. So uh, I see that some of you are uh, playing around with some of my past demos that I've been doing lately. And I hope you post them on social media. I'd love to see them. So uh, be sure and do that. And you can always tag me and then, then I'm sure to see it. So uh, be sure and do that. So last week we did hair. We did this blonde hair and everybody said, I hope you finished that portrait. So, <laughs> so here we are today and I am going to work on the um, facial features. So let's just jump on in here and we will take a look. Oh, my screen's frozen. One second. One second. I just got to get this... Uh, Wrong one. Hang on. <laughs> it helps if I pick the right camera. All right. There we go. <laughs> All right. So uh, we did this hair last week. Unfortunately, my paper had some sort of a flaw in it, and um, I, I got this really weird mark here. So you kind of have to ignore that. Uh, but this was the hair that I did last week. So um, now what I want to do is start off with the face. So let's let's take a look here. Uh, this is my daughter, in case you missed last week's um, demo, and uh, um, you know I, I chose this picture because of the way she had her hair and had lots of light and, and shadow in it. And uh, she has a lot of light on her face with really only a little bit of shadow from her hair on her face. And you see a little bit of shadow like in the cheek area and uh, you know, in the eye sockets and things like that. But let's look at some of the overall skin tone. First of all, one of the things that I see a lot when people are painting skin tones is that they mix up a color and they put it on far too heavy. It needs to be very, very light. So what I'm going to start off with is where I see the lightest highlight in the skin tones. So that means watering down my paint quite a bit. But first of all, let's take a look at what colors I might mix for this. So one of my kind of go-to combinations, and I, I don't use this for every skin tone, of course, because, you know, if you've got somebody uh, with very dark complexion or um, olive complexion or something like that, I, I might use a different combination. So please don't take this as, here's the formula for skin tone, because it's not. Uh, but overall, I'm looking at a gold tone mixed with a pink tone. If I put those two together, I will get something nice and peachy, quite natural looking. So I'm going to use raw sienna, which is a color I used in the hair. And I'm going to use a little bit of, I can either use permanent alizarin crimson or I can use permanent rose. Um, I think today I'll use, uh, I'll use permanent rose. All right, so if I put these together, you can see on my palette, I've put them side by side, and I'm going to mix them together, and this is going to turn into a little bit of a, a peachy pink. So I'm going to thin this down, because this is going to be my first wash. When I really want to have nice, smooth skin tones, I will build this up probably in several layers in order to build up my skin tones uh, to what I want. And I will let this dry in between. So going to water this down and I'm going to wet my area before I actually paint on it. Very often, uh, very often I will paint through the eye, but you can see in this instance her eye, the white of her eye is very cool looking. Uh, it's, it's a cooler tone than her skin tone, but very often, especially with somebody who's older, you may have, I will just go right through the eye and everything. So, this is not the formula for painting all for portraits. Every portrait you have to uh, look at it individually and see what that particular portrait needs. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm starting with the lightest skin tone, regardless of the skin tone. So I'm starting light, working to dark. I'm going to wet this area now. 
So I'm not going to wet the eye because it's a different um, temperature. It's a different, uh, it's a cool tone rather than a warm tone. But for this light color, I think I will go through her teeth. I know, that sounds weird, right? But it's very light. I'm going to go right up to the hair there and go around her eye. There we go, and I'm going to spread this around as evenly as I can. Um, I was going to wet it, but there was so much paint in my brush, it ended up just being painted instead of just wet first and paint added. But I, I would suggest to you, if you're doing a portrait, don't, don't start learning portraits and do something really, really tiny. It's really hard to get the details and the blending in such a small space. So if you work larger for a portrait, you'll find it actually easier. So I'm going to just spread this around. All right, now I'm not using any masking. I just painted around her eye. I'm not going to let this dry yet though. So I'm gonna to go to a little bit smaller brush. Um, I should actually back up here and just mention that the paper I'm working on is Arches 140 pound cold press paper and I have pre-stretched it. And I, uh, so I soaked the paper for three minutes in my sink, just room temperature water, and then I quickly stapled it down and I left it overnight and then in the morning I taped it down. So that's what I do to stretch my paper. And the reason I do that is just so that when I'm finished my painting, it's completely flat. It will be tight as a drum because uh, being cotton paper, it shrinks and it will, it will just be really tight when it dries. So I will, um, I'm gonna wipe the tape off here. I actually did try to fix that, but I just kind of made more of a mess of it, but no matter, we will just press on with this demo. So I will, now I can see that the paper's starting to wrinkle and guess what? It's wherever it's wrinkled and, and dipping down so you have a valley, the paint wants to settle there. So there's a couple of things I can do but the easiest thing I find to do is just to take a piece of paper towel and just touch the, the tip of it into those puddles and wick up the extra extra paint in those areas, right? So you can hopefully see that I've wicked up some of that color. Let me zoom in a little bit here. All right, then we'll be able to see these features a little bit better. And here, there's, uh, you know, a little, I can see the paper's wrinkling because it's getting wet. Um, I just talked about stretching. It doesn't keep it from wrinkling while you're working on it, but what it does do is it makes sure that when it's dry, it's going to be really tight as a drum and flat. So I'm just touching the corner, and this is pretty saturated now, so I'll get a new corner, and just touch it into those spots gently, and that just pulls up the, I, I'm not blotting. I want to make that clear. I'm not blotting, I'm just touching, and it's wicking up that color wicking up that extra moisture. All right, so while this is in here, <clears throat> I'm going to go to a slightly smaller brush. I'm using a squirrel hair brush here. This one's, um, well, this one says a six, but just to show you the size next to my baby finger, it's about that big. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of, um, I believe I used permanent alizarin crimson and neutral tint for some of this shadow up in here. I believe that's what I used, but I can't remember <laughs> since last week. I should look at that video again. But uh, that will give me kind of a, a really dark burgundy, a little bit duller. But I don't want the paint on my palette to be too watery. Uh, that's going to be important because I'll, I won't have any control if I put it on a nice wet surface and I've got really watery paint, it just goes wherever it wants to go. If I want to keep it where I want it, want to put it, I need to make sure my brush is much drier. 
Yeah, every once in a while, there apparently I heard. No, I I don't even. This is hearsay, but um, I heard that they were switching over where they get their sizing from, or their sizing process, or something along those lines, and that there was a couple of batches that went out that didn't have, um, you know, that had a few flaws in them and stuff. So hopefully that's resolved by now. But uh, I do like arches, so I hope uh, I hope that gets um, sorted out. I'm going to um, use. Uh, this is permanent alizarin crimson and neutral tint that I'm combining here. And I'm going to come in and right along her hairline here, I'm just going to get this a little bit darker. It's giving me a kind of a dark reddish color. And I'm blotting my brush, just softening this a bit. Just getting that a little bit darker and blending that into her into the skin tone which I've just applied. Now I'm going to get some more of this uh, peachy color and start overlapping that so that I have a little bit more of a transition. I don't have any masking on the hairs so I'll just paint around those. Let's combine this a little bit. I'm trying to make a transition so I'm combining the two to get some nice softness. And I, I'm going to go into this area. I want to go a little bit more peachy here, I think. So I'll mix a little bit more of my peachy color, but not as watery as I did first at first. So not as watery because I want a little control. In fact, I'm going to blot my brush. Just want to make sure I'm not um, missing any questions. Uh, Okay, I don't think so. Just a lot of greetings. And we have people from all over. Thank you very much. Yeah, every once in a while, you know, the, these paint companies, they or the paper manufacturers, they, you know, I guess probably cutting costs or maybe supplies or who knows what the reasons are. But um, the every once in a while, something changes and it's like, oh, no, don't change my favorite thing. So you can see I'm starting to build up where there are shadows. And I'm going to come in where her brow line is. So where her eyebrow is, uh, that's where the, the plane of the face, the planes of the face start to um, uh, angle inward. So we're creating a little bit more shadow there. And this comes pretty, pretty close to the corner of her eye here. And all of this area in here is going to get a little bit darker in the eye socket area. So there's a little hint of a, um, a lower lid here. She doesn't have much. She's young. So she has this nice uh, gentle... She doesn't have wrinkles yet. <laughs> but... Um, and she has, you know, you just see the hint of her other eye here and down the bridge of her nose. And like I said, I would probably do this in many layers, but because we are, you know, doing a live demo, it's not a long one. I will try to do it in fewer steps, but keep in mind, if I'm going to put the spit and polish into this that I would normally do if I were doing a portrait commission or something like that, I would probably spend more time doing more layers to build this up more gradually but um, under the chin it's I can start it to I can start to feel it getting a little bit dry see I just put that paint down there and it made a hard edge so guess what that's telling me I have to stop I don't want to stop I have to I, you know I have more to do so I don't want to stop but the paper says I have to so I'm softening an edge just to make sure that it doesn't dry with a hard line. Oops, that one's going to be a little bit hard maybe. And I'm going to dry this. So I will take my dryer and I'm going to dry this layer. Make sure it gets locked into the paper. And once I'm confident that, you know, this paint that I've put down isn't going to move around, I can come back in, re-wet, and continue. 
it's that knowing when to stop even though you really 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 don't want to it, it's that's a hard thing to re you know rein your back uh, rein yourself back in it was a combination between real and rain <laughs> Oh, you're welcome, Laura. Yeah, I had I had several emails and messages and uh, comments and things. Please finish the photo. Please finish the portrait. So, here we go. <laughs> All right. I have no masking fluid on here, so I can you know really get this dried without concern of baking on masking fluid but I do have to wait for this to come back to room temperature if I if I paint on it right now it just evaporates what I'm trying to put on so just going to let that get back to room temperature I had a little fleck on there it was driving me crazy and but I just left it and I waited till it was dry so if you recall last week when we were doing the hair I made a real point of keep it soft keep it soft keep it soft I was like a broken record and uh, the same thing is going to apply for her eyebrows so when we do her eyebrow area here I don't want to put individual hairs on light colored skin especially if it's darker darker color on lighter color so it just looks too um, too stiff, too contrived and, and unnatural. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so I'm going to go back once again. I'm going to re-wet. It's back, it's cool enough now. I can re-wet this. The thing that always messes up or makes portraits look muddy is that working back in, working back in when things are trying to dry. The paper's trying to dry and you're forcing it. And when you force it, things get ugly. They get muddy colors, you know, your warm colors, your cool colors start mixing together. Uh, and it starts lifting off the first layer and uh, just bad stuff happens. So be patient with portraits if you want them to look nice and smooth. This is not the only way to paint a portrait. There's lots of great ways to paint portraits. I have seen uh, some fantastic portraits where they haven't wet the paper. They just put on really watery paint and put lots of layers on and lots of lines all over the face and it doesn't matter. It still looks amazing. And the key here is just build up those values correctly. If you're making a shape that that rounds like so a cheek for example it 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 goes around the cheek and then it goes up the nose and so on but there's no angles so there's no hard lines and um so if you even if you aren't wetting your paper first the key here is just make them gradual gradual in increments so that you're not jumping all of a sudden to a sudden dark and um, that you have, you know, transitions between sh uh, highlight and shadow. <clears throat> so I'm just going to redistribute this water. I want to make sure it's on here evenly. Hard to go around those little hairs now that I took the masking fluid off. I could actually have taken the time to put more masking on them, but I won't worry about that. Or I, it, Actually, if I had known last week when I was doing the hair, I would have left the masking on there, but I didn't know at that time that I would be doing this this week. So uh, I, I probably would have just left it on while I did the face. All right, so redistributing this water so that I have um, uniform application of water. If I, if I have puddles and I go to paint into that, it, I'll have no control. It's just going to be too wet things will go out of control. Uh, so I'm waiting for this to just soak into the paper slightly. Make sure there's no puddles. Spread that around. Just make sure there's no puddles. 
I don't have to wick it up this time, it seems. I don't have any puddles. So I didn't get it quite as wet. And uh, now back to my smaller brush. My smaller brush, same tone, just less water. Uh, but there will be occasionally some changes in skin tone. It's not maybe as obvious in this particular portrait, but very often you will see kind of a, a greenish color in the skin tones. And basically what that is, is the, um, you know, when the blood vessels and things that come closer to the, to the surface, like if you look at the back of your hand and you see a vein, you can see it's kind of a greenish color or bluish color. And so you will get a little bit of that in occasional places, you know, where the blood vessels are closer to the surface. But um, it also will cool down some of your shadows. So I don't see a lot of that in this particular uh, reference. I'm looking on my screen as opposed to my, because uh, I see no green in this, uh, this printout. But on screen, I see ever so slightly a little bit of of a greenish color in uh, like under her eye so with the with the tiniest whisper of color green color I'm going to use uh, raw sienna and uh, maybe I'll use some cerulean blue here right so I get a little bit of a greenish color it's not much and super watery just a hint of this under her eye here hardly noticeable. It's not much at all. Pretty yellowy actually. Yellowy green, but a little under her nose perhaps. Uh, so I know that sounds a little weird, but it's so that there's a little bit of a change, not only of value, but a little bit of a change of temperature. So we have warm and cool. Um, I'm just reading. Oh, okay. Um, just looking at some, um, Pax's mom has uh, posted something that she found online. And yeah, otherwise we've got lots of greetings. Um, And I think I don't think I've missed any uh, questions. Oh, the, the oh yes, thank you, Melody. You answered that question about the the watery wash, raw sienna permanent rose. Uh, so I'm going back to my raw sienna permanent rose, and maybe a little bit more permanent rose in there, and I'm going to start darkening up some of these shadows. A little more permanent rows, I think. I might have talked a little while there, so it's might be starting to dry slightly, but I'll have to work quick. So we have a um, crease in her eyelid. By the way, when I'm doing a portrait, I am frequently um, I, I most often, I should say, most often I am uh, starting with the skin tones because that's the wettest part that I'm going to do on the face. So I won't even do the eye until I've got all the skin tone around the eye done because I know that the lashes and things like that are typically, most of the time, are going to be darker than the skin upon which they're um, in front of. So... I need to do that. Now the nostril is not a black hole. It's just a darker pink version here. So just I'm doing that on wet so that it doesn't become a very stiff, harsh looking um, hole in her head. <laughs> you know, that wouldn't be right. And I never did get down to finish the the area under the chin. So I'm going to do that now. I'm feeling though that my paper is really starting to dry. I'm going to dampen this area where I want to work. I'm going to dampen it. And 
and I want to get that that like indent there before her chin and it's a little bit more a little bit more golden so I'm altering the the ratio of raw sienna or permanent rose as I see it in the photo I, I'm not trying to make everything sort of here's the color and this is where you put it everywhere uh, no I am shifting back and forth from a little bit more gold to a little bit more pink like cheeks for example are usually more pink um, your nose is a little bit more pink and that sort of thing but on her neck here it looks like it's probably picking up some of her hair color it's, it's got a little bit of a different tone probably doesn't hasn't been exposed to as much um, sun over the years or anything too so let's let's get a little bit more of a, a golden peach color in here Now, if I want her shirt or her neck to look like it's really tucked inside of her shirt or her scarf here, I'm not sure which it is, but uh, if I really want that to look like it's tucked inside, I'm going to have to come in with something quite dark. Let me move this up a little bit. I'm going to have to come in with something quite dark down here where it sort of disappears underneath that scarf. So I'm going to come back to this shadow color I used at the top. Uh, permanent alizarin crimson mixed with a bit of neutral tint and I will put that in um, there's a couple of colors that work really well for for typical Caucasian portraits and that would be um, like for some of the shadows there's a color that I've I've used and it's um, I believe it's a Windsor Newton color called what's it called it's called a perline maroon and it's a gorgeous color and that work seems to work pretty well I find for for many of the portraits that I do I don't happen to have that on my palette right now but um, but that is one that I'll pull out once in a while because I, I really like how it looks but um, I want to get this looking like it disappears but I don't want it too harsh uh, so I'm doing this while the paint while the paper is wet and I'm getting extra dark right at that edge, right where it disappears. Right, to really make that tuck in there, much like what we did under the hair up here, right, where we really wanted to make that look like the hair was coming forward. So what we're doing is we're, it's like we're carving. We're carving out all these shadows to make the contours of the face. Now, like I said, I often do many layers, so I'm going to dry this once again. And I won't do any of my facial features until, uh, like the eyes and so on, I, until I have all these skin tones done. So this is what's probably going to take the most time and probably good that we're only doing half of a face. A whole face would actually take longer, but half of a face, you can imagine that other half is pretty similar. Jan's art says uh, the Paraline Maroon. Yes, I'm sure that's the name of it. The Paraline Maroon mixed with Thalo Green makes a rich black. See, you can find all com all kinds of combinations to make blacks or, or oranges or reds or purples, whatever you want. You you know, there's more than one way. <clears throat> all right, let's. Allow that to cool down just a little bit here, and um, good morning, Rushika. All over the place, after Massachusetts, Colorado. Uh, I have to scroll up. There's so many here. Um, right up to the top here we got we got everywhere uh, Pennsylvania uh, we've got uh, Iceland that's on my bucket list coming to Iceland I, I, I would think that would be really nice um, Holton Hills kind of a local area uh, Toledo Ohio we've got um, uh, Arlington Virginia 
Kingston, Ontario, uh, Washington, Toronto, uh, Elliott City, Maryland, Manitoba, Toronto, um, CZ. Oh, I'm trying to think what that is. Somebody tell me how has to tell me. Jelena, you have to tell me where that is. Um, Czechoslovakia, I'm guessing. Um, da Downington, Pennsylvania. Uh, we got New Hampshire. Uh, uh, we got uh, Langley, BC, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, UK, Northern California, Newfoundland, Brighton, uh, Scotland, uh, Sweden, Finland. <laughs> Oh, you know, I, I absolutely love seeing this. Naples, Florida, Texas, uh, Missouri. Oh my gosh, every all over the place. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm also trying to skim the the comments just to make sure I haven't missed any um, important questions. I don't want to. I don't like to leave you hanging. Art Edge. Hmm. I I don't know that one. Melbourne, Australia. Boy, I got must. I don't know what time it would be there right now. Probably uh, late in the day. <clears throat> India, awesome. Okay, so Northern Ontario. Yeah, I love. I love seeing everywhere, all over the place. That's that's exciting for me. So this is cooled down. Uh, I'm going to rewet one more time, and then here's something that you need to know is that. I'm working on a hundred percent cotton paper. I think that that's almost almost a, a mandatory kind of surface to paint on with. You know, if you're trying to do this type of a portrait, you know, where where the skin tones are all smooth and everything, I think you need to be working on a hundred percent cotton paper. And here's why: if your paper is not hundred percent cotton, maybe it's got some wood pulp uh, content, maybe some other fillers in there. Um, it, it's not going to be as absorbent. So if it's not as absorbent, those first layers sit on top. And then when you go to put another wash on or you start to um, uh, you start to uh, build up layers and you just pull the first ones off because they're, they're never really bonded into the paper because they're they're more sitting on top than they are underneath. 2 a.m. Oh my gosh, now that is. I'm honored that you would come at 2 a.m. to watch me paint. Thank you. Um, I guess that's why we don't get more people from Australia when I do my demos, right? But uh, thank goodness for the recordings. I guess the uh, the Australians will probably be watching more of the replays than live. So I'm, I'm very pleased that you're here. Thank you. Uh, Ugh, 2 a.m. Can't even think of that. <laughs> Hot press for portrait? Uh, I guess it depends on what kind of portrait you're doing, like what style you're doing it in and everything. I think it's great for the final features and everything, but I find that it's harder on hot press to get a nice a nice uh, blending of colors as, as much. It tends, again, to sit on the top of the, on the surface of the paper more because the hot press paper they compress the fibers, you know, they use heat to make the paper. And so the the fibers get uh, more compressed, you know, just like they've been ironed. So the paint has a tendency to sit more on the surface than it does into the paper. So it's fantastic for detail, but then the washes aren't as good. I actually like, I, have, I actually like doing portraits on rough paper, but of course it means that you're not going to get that super fine detail in your in your in your uh, uh, facial features maybe that's important to you maybe it's not maybe like I know that every time I do a demo you're seeing how I paint but out there you guys you're probably got a dozen different styles that you prefer to paint in and um, so I'm just coming in here reinforcing some of the some of these shadows a little bit more getting a little braver building up a little bit I'm gonna go a little bit more permanent rose maybe in this and 
and she's got a little crease in the corner of her mouth so I'm going to put that in at the same time. So I'm getting some really nice soft tones here. There is right across the bridge of her, like above the bridge of her nose, there's, um, or between the brows I guess, there'll be a little, little change of plane. So just a slight, it's not a lot, There's just a little bit of a um, little bit of color change right here. And the rest of her forehead's pretty pretty light, you know, other than where it, her hair tucks up underneath. Get a little more of that peachy color in there. And I do have to be paying attention. Is this drying? If it's drying, it's talking to me. It's telling me I better stop. You know, if it's if I start getting hard lines, that's telling me time to quit. And I think I, that's just about where I'm at right now. I know it doesn't stay lo wet long, does it? But the good thing is, is I can dry it quick and uh, and keep going. I'm going to come in along her chin here and add a little bit more of that um, peachy color because because on your chin there's like a little ball right so um, so to make that look round I need to put a little shading in there not quite blending as I want so I'm rinsing my brush and blotting and I'm going to tickle that now it's it's telling me to stop so my paper's saying stop uh, time to stop <laughs> so I have to dry again and I'll do this process many 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 times um, as I'm doing a portrait and really building up those those shapes so I think I'll probably do maybe one more and then I'll go on to the facial features because I know watching the same step over and over again is a little bit redundant um, although there is changes there are changes English is fine <laughs> There are changes uh, as you do this, as you add each layer, the changes are subtle, but they are there. What's the difference between uh, using them? I find that the permanent alizarin crimson is maybe just a little darker red, a little bit, um, a little bit duller, perhaps a little cooler. Uh, but that, of course, changes with every brand that you use as well. Uh, if I were to... Do I have a scrap of paper handy? If I were to take permanent rose here and permanent alizarin crimson beside it, you'll see that the permanent alizarin crimson is, you know, just a little, little bit duller, a little bit darker, a little duller. Not too much difference. Um, so I, I start to use the permanent alizarin crimson as I start getting into more shadows. But honestly, if you didn't have both, just use one or the other. So I'm going to wet this one more time. I drop some on the hair. Let me get that off. As I don't want my skin tones running into my hair, just take a dry paper towel and blot that off. And I'm going to come in here, still working around that eye. Distribute that water evenly. You might think, well, why, why don't I just use a spritzer? I get that a lot. Why don't I just use a spritzer or a spray bottle? And the reason is because I don't want skin tone to start bleeding into the eye. Do I avoid granulating colors for portraits? I, I do, actually. Uh, but that's a personal preference. Some people like that grittiness. And it might depend on the person that I'm doing. Like if, I were, if I were doing a, a real dusty, rugged cowboy kind of thing. I, you know, I'm a gritty 
uh, pigment might be great for that kind of a character. You know, that might work out really well. Uh, but for a young person, I probably wouldn't be using any granulating colors there. So I guess the answer is depends. <laughs> but a um, little bit more skin tone, just coming up into some of these darks, dark areas here, getting a little bit more built in there, a bit more down on her cheek. I'm going to blot my brush here. I want a little bit of control. I want to get a little more pinky tone down under her nose. Middle of this shadow right here. Now as the, like if I start painting into the really wet paint, the color I put on really starts to disperse. But if I wait until that um, paper gets to just the right uh, sheen, so when you buy wallpaper or when you buy paint for your house you can buy gloss you can buy satin or you can buy flat and so the the kind of look i'm looking for is the satin so i'm looking for a satin finish on my wet paper and um and i will paint into that if i paint in while it's really glossy it will the colors will melt more so timing is pretty important and don't forget your brush your brush dampness or how wet it is uh, should be uh, also a factor. You need to consider how wet your brush is. If you're forgetting about your brush, you, you may end up putting in something really wet over top. Oh yes, granulation, yeah, uh, burnt, both burnt sienna and, and Payne's gray or burnt sienna and um, ultramarine blue, for example, to make a gray that way, they would get very granulating. Now you'll notice I haven't used any blue in here yet. Um, I, well, the little hint that I put in that greenish color, but I didn't put any blue. One thing I have found about adding blue to a portrait is, wow, does it make things gray <laughs> really fast. So I'm avoiding any, any gray or blue at this stage. I really want to try to build up those contours as much as I can with warmer colors. And I made this mistake when I was learning portraits is that I put in blue, I wanted to make my shadows cool, right? My highlights are warm, so I want to make my shadows cool. So I put in blue and found that it just got so flat and so lifeless. So I find that putting more of a a burgundy or a rusty color in your sh shading for your face is much more lively. Uh, I'm much happier with my portraits now that I'm not putting a lot of blues into my shadows. Um, I just really like how I like them so much better. So as I'm waiting for that satin shine you know, the the paper's really wet, then it's a little wet, and then it's damp, and then it's less damp, and so on. So there's there's all this process of as it's drying. You have to try and find the right moment. And you know what? That's a practice thing. Just keep trying, and you will learn what that right timing is. And you'll know the telltale signs of when you should stop, because it will... Um, it will start to form harder edges that you're you're not wanting and with more experience as well you you'll learn that you can um, maybe dampen an area just before you paint into it and that sort of thing inside the mouth is important not to put blue oh yes uh, I mean look at your mouth is very pink right everything in there is very pink um, th there are like like if I open my mouth you know, you see real dark areas in there, but the tongue, the the gums, they're not, they're, there's no blue there. So watch that you don't get your shadows too blue, too dull. Now this is starting to get a harder line. Let's blot my brush. Tickle the edge there so I can soften that. 
lock that down. All right, so you can get the idea now of how I'm creating the contours. And I would do this multiple times in order to get this the way I want it. Now I'm going to come back to that um, ultramarine, or not my ultramarine, pardon me, I meant to say um, permanent alizarin crimson, a little bit of neutral tint. And here's why I'm using neutral tint instead of Payne's Gray. If I were to paint with Payne's Gray, I would put, this is my neutral tint, and you can see that it's a little on the purplish side. Let me thin it down because it's a little easier to see when it's diluted a bit. That is neutral tint. <clears throat> and when you see them side by side, you'll see that there's quite a difference. This is Payne's Gray. So you see how much blue there is in Payne's Gray. It's also a darker color, but there you go. Neutral tint, which already has a little bit of that pinky purple tone in it, or um, Payne's Gray, which leans a little bit more to the blues and purples. So I'm staying away from the blues and purples for her skin tones, for sure. Uh, if I have to add anything, it's going to be neutral tint. Um, yet yeah, I do use my travel brushes a lot. I just I think it's it's not you know the fact that it's a travel brush so much is I just like the squirrel hair brushes and how they come to a nice point and hold a lot of paint. So I, I do use these a lot. Um, okay, so what? speaking of sort of wetting an area before you work on it, I'm gonna dry what I've got. And let that get back. I didn't get it too hot this time, so I'm going to come in. I'm going to dampen around her mouth. So I'm going to dampen all around her mouth, except for the teeth. I'm going to dampen around her mouth. And I want to dampen that because unless you're wearing wax lips or really strong lipstick or something, usually you don't have a perfect line where your lips are. If you have natural lips, um, on your portrait, you would typically have um, a uh, a little bit of a soft edge along the top. And if you, <laughs> it's funny because if you work on dry and you paint the lips on separate, they look separate. They look like they were cut and pasted on the face. So you want them to, like, I mean, they're all, it's really skin, right? Your lips are skin and the, um, you know, there's a there's no seam <laughs> other than just the changing of color. So you want to make sure that that's not a hard seam. Uh, I don't think there's too much on on us that has like hard seams. We our, our skin changes uh, from you know color to color and and light to shadow and everything. But there's no seams. There's no hard edges. Uh, so I'm going to use some of that. I'm going to use some of that alizarin crimson and maybe a bit of um, raw sienna. Mix those together a little bit and I think that would give me a nice uh, deeper, deeper pink for her lips. So I dampened it. And now when I paint that in, the edge of that line isn't like a hard, crisp, cutout looking thing. So my brush is not overly damp as well. And I am looking also at the contour of just the lip. So the lip is rounded, the lower lip in particular is rounded. So as I paint this, that could actually be a little wetter. So I'm going to dampen my brush and just get that a little bit wetter here. Dam I should say damper. I shouldn't say wet because that, that's misleading. It's damp, a little bit more damp.
Yeah, color charts are a good idea. Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, this is permanent alizarin crimson with a little bit of raw sienna here. And I'm painting on a damp, not wet, but a damp surface. And the highlight on her lip is actually much like her skin color. I can add a little bit more of the darkening under here. In fact, when I'm still at this light stage, I'm going to come down into her gums as well. inside of her mouth here is quite dark so I'm just going to paint that across there so I was able to get some some of that nice tone it doesn't look harsh because I, I dampened the area first but only damp not really wet dampen the area first and I'm working into it while it's still a little damp to build up these shadows so I'm just taking a little more color a little less watery color and adding that in leaving just not painting where the highlight is okay i think i need to soften this line just a little bit so i'll just blot my brush and just soften that a little bit and anywhere i feel that i need to soften it a little bit that's what i will do just i'm blotting my brush and just tickling with the tip of my brush here that softens anything that I'm not happy with. All right, so we have some fairly decent looking lips. We also painted the gums at the same time. If you get a water, it, yeah, and that's why, if you get a water ring or a blossom, the reason here is because your brush is wetter than what's on the surface. Now remember, if this is only a little bit damp, boy, your brush has to be quite a bit drier than that. It can, it needs to be a little damp, but it can't be wetter than the paper. So that's what you have to be careful of. Make sure that, like this brush to my hand just feels like uh, it's almost dry, but it's I can still feel a little bit of dampness and that's it. That, you know, I wouldn't be able to really get a shine or paint anything on my fingers and actually show the water. That's how dry I have dried my brush. But it's always because, uh, like, blossoms always happen because what's in your brush is wetter than your paper. So that's why that happens. Hello, Sweden. Hi, Germany. All right, so uh, I did take that very lightest uh, skin tone. I took that through her teeth because her teeth are not uh, cool white like her eyes are here. So I'm going to leave her lips again for a minute. I'm just going to let those dry and I'm going to go on to something else here. Uh, but I'm going to take some of that darker uh, color that I used for her lips, maybe put a little uh, neutral tint into it get that a little bit darker and I'm going to get this nostril a little bit more um, defined now you can see I'm painting on dry I'm painting on dry there and that makes like a really solid line right well that doesn't look right so I'm going to deliberately blot my brush and dampen it and and tickle that to soften that edge so that's when I'm doing a little detail like if I'm doing a little sh uh, small detail I will paint it on the dry and then I soften it so it depends on what you're doing if, you, if you're doing larger areas like you know her forehead and her cheek and and you're trying to do all of that all si simultaneously that's when I wet the whole area and I start dropping it in nice and wet and then I start to refine and when I start to refine and really um, get down into the the contours of the face like the the finer smaller shadows and things like that I will come in and uh, do this on dry and then blot my brush and manually soften that edge manually soften as opposed to 
um, wetting the area first. All right, so I dampen my brush and, and help that to move. So I put a little shadow underneath her, underneath the end of her nose here. Let's do a little bit more there. That's softer than her nostril. And I will do some of this in this uh, crease of her smile as well. So I put this crease of her smile in here a little bit stronger, a little bit darker. And I'm going to rinse and blot. And I have to work quick because if I start chatting, that really starts to harden. So, of course, you, timing is everything. You have to work quick when you are softening a line because you you need to get in there before that paint dries. Doing it while the paint is still wet or doing it while the paint is still wet is very important. So so I'm rinsing and blotting, softening this edge. And I will go in little increments like this. And you can see her nose is is starting to get more dimension to it. Um, when your paper is dry and you re-wet a small area, sometimes it gets a watering. Yes, it does. Uh, so, when you re-wet an area, make sure that the previous layers, especially if you've got a lot of layers built up, uh, make sure that those previous layers are fully dry. And with every subsequent layer, don't get your paper sopping wet like the very first layer. You know, each layer you're dampening, dampening, not wetting so much. Uh, once you wet something, you soften up those first layers and it, that starts to create those rings. So only damp on, um, after you've done a bunch of layers, only damp. All right, so let's, let's come on up and do the white of her eye. So the white of her eye, I have a suspicion she used a, eye, a whitening feature on this photograph. This is her photograph. Um, it's a selfie, as you can tell, but uh, she might have used that because this looks um, quite white. And I'm, I am going to use a little bit of blue. So this is a little bit of cobalt, but cobalt by itself is kind of bright. Let's... Uh, I'll dull that down with just a little bit of that peachy color. This peachy color is a little on the orange side. Just a little bit, just so it's not a bright blue. Dull it down. Neutralize it. All right, so it's pretty watery. I don't want to, I obviously want to keep this fairly light, but I'm going to I'm going to dampen this. The white of her eye. Let me see if I can zoom in a little closer as I do this. Just as I do this part. So, small brush. I'm dampening this area here around her iris and so on. In fact, I probably could go right through her whole eye now that I'm looking at it. All right, only damp. It's, you know, it's not really, like, if I hold this up, you can't even really see much of a shine on it at all. You know you're too wet if you see a real shine. So I'm going to take a little bit of this blue-gray, but only a little bit on my brush. If I put too much on, it's a small space, if I put too much on there, this will really fill in fast. So I'm going to blot my brush and just sort of ease my way into this. Okay, it's not pure white. Now I think I need a little more color, a little bit more blue, and the lid, her, her eyelashes make a little bit more shadow, so it's going to have a little bit more um, blue there. And this always looks crazy. When you do this on the eye, it always looks a little bit, um, a little bit weird. Uh, yes, the fact that if you're not working on 100% cotton, cotton paper, sometimes you can get a ratio, like some cotton and some other stuff, but 100% cotton paper will be the easiest for this layering effect, uh, definitely, because it won't lift what's underneath. So 
the inside corner of her eye is less blue. It's actually got a little bit more of this skin tone in it. So I'm going to put a little bit of that color in there, although I just went a little bit heavy, so I'm going to thin it down and go a little bit with the pinkier color in her, the in inside uh, near her tear duct, or I guess it's a tear duct, isn't it? Uh, there. Coming back to my blue. Now, I, the reason I left my blue for a minute is because it was still pretty wet and I didn't have control over where I was putting this. So I'm now coming under here a little bit more and this is always going to feel like like too dark, too dark, too dark. And it's only because the pupil's not done yet or the iris isn't done yet. So I'm looking very closely at my picture to see where is that where's that light where's that dark where's the shadow going a little bit more my brush is really getting quite dry now if i were to take that piece of paper just to show you like that's how dry it is so I'm going to come in here now with a much drier brush and I see just little hints of this uh, shade color here. Didn't want it that dark right in that spot so I'll lift that off. And that looks goofy. Doesn't it? Looks looks really strange. So we need to do the we need to do the the iris uh, to get rid of that strangeness. <clears throat> so for her iris, she has green eyes. Um, so I'm going to use some of this blue, cobalt blue, little raw sienna. Because it's not a bright, bright green. It's a, it's a green, but it's and raw sienna being in the um, yellow family will produce a little bit of a green color. And I'm going to. And my paper's now getting pretty darn dry, so I'm pretty much painting on dry paper right now. And. I will just, I'm going to work around highlights. So I'm painting around spaces. I could have masked those off as well, but I think I kind of like them softer looking. And I will soften this a bit in a second. Masking fluid's wonderful, but it can give you really harsh highlights. Uh, so where I want to soften it a little bit, it's just just here at this edge and here. And I'm getting really picky. Now when I'm doing my portraits, I, this is how picky I get. But you may not, that might not be your cup of tea. Maybe that's too picky for you and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to go stronger color now. The outer part of the iris is always a little bit darker. It doesn't seem to matter what um, what color your eyes are. The outer part of the iris is always a little bit darker. There's probably a name for that, a medical name, but I don't know what it is. But this shape is important and it, it's as if, and I'm following what I see in my photograph. I am not, um, I'm not putting in a full circle. <laughs> Her eyelids are covering some of that circle. We know it's a circle, but her eyelids are covering some of that. So therefore, we don't see the entire iris. Now, the reason I'm putting a little bit of dark under here is because of the shading that the eye, uh, the eyelashes and things are going to give us. All right, so I've got a light and I've got a dark. Let's just start um, getting a little bit more mid value in here so I'm just going to build this up a little bit 
and you'll look, you know, where's the highlights in the eye? And it, I don't want to fill that all in because I think it would get too dark there. And I want her eye to have some life. So we've got um, kind of a nice green iris. They still think I could go a little darker on the outside. It's always going to dry lighter, remember that. Raw Sienna, Cobalt Blue. A little more blue because I need it a little bit darker. And So I put a darker line along her upper lid, but she doesn't have any uh, uh, any dark line along the bottom because of the um, you know the light is coming down. So it's her upper lid is shading her eye, not her lower lid. I'm gonna rinse this a little bit. Softness, softness, softness. I think that's one of the biggest things with portraits. You know, if they're not looking quite realistic for you, you're not focusing enough on your softness. Uh, I knew somebody would look that up for me. Limbal ring. Okay. Now I know. Thank you. <laughs> the limbal ring. Will I remember that the next time I paint a portrait? I don't know. I have to think of some way to remember it. Limbal. Symbol. It's the shape of a symbol. Limbal ring. <laughs> Word association. All right, so now my neutral tint. Neutral tint, if I use it heavy, like if I use it fairly um, creamy consistency, it looks really dark. It'll make, you know, very, very good dark. Uh, if I thin it out, it turns into this really nice sort of purple gray. But I'm going to use it fairly thick here to create the middle of the, um, like the pupil, basically. And that, of course, is in the very middle. And I think it needs a little bit of softening around the outside, so I'm really blotting my brush and just softening that a little bit. Now you notice how much I'm slowing down to put the details in the features. The features, especially the eyes, um, are um, pretty darn important. Right? They're, they're really quite important. So I slow it down. I really put a lot of um, work into those areas. I'm going to darken the limbal ring. See if I say it enough times I'll remember it. I thought it was dark and then it dried and it's like oh man it's not dark and it, especially once I put that uh, that really dark area in the middle of her eye. Okay so now the limbal ring is is much darker. I still think her eyes are probably a little bit too light. If the pupil looks like it's like too dark, you're probably too light with the um, with the iris. I'm looking to see what um, the, you've been waiting to paint her redheaded, freckle-faced granddaughter. She's eight and blonde and dark highlights. Oh, advice for. Oh, red hair. Oh, you know what? I've had a couple of inquiries. Ever since I did blonde, the blonde one last week, I've had, you know, what what's the right colors to use for brown? What's the right, right colors to do for curly? Or, you know, how do you do curly? And how I could do like 10 demos just on people, right? Could be a whole course just on that. But um, as I was saying to somebody else, the um, a lot of things come into play like the lighting and uh, you know you've probably all seen um, 
you know, a, a black lab, when you see a black lab, for example, and he's indoors and he just looked black, you know, and then you put him outside and he's, he turns, all his highlights are blue because he's, the, the highlights, especially on dark hair, will reflect, you know, the surroundings. So outside there's a lot of blue sky and so their highlights end up being blue. Um, I'm going to press on here. I'm going to keep darkening some of these areas, but not anything new. I'm just darkening what I have and softening up. Uh, but yeah, all the different hair types, curl, curly, um, um, even afro, it's quite different, and uh, braids and uh, light and dark and red. and <laughs> there's, there's so much variety that uh, I could do a hundred different demos. So I guess, uh, what color would I use for red hair and freckles? Well, that perylene maroon's pretty nice, but um, I will say one thing about people with hair that's colored, um, you know, whether it's naturally colored or whether it's colored um, chemically, <laughs> uh, Start off with your highlights. Remember next, if you remember last week, I was talking about next to the highlight is the purest, brightest color. So start with your light colors and build up to your darks um, because the light colors will get muddy faster. All right, so um, I'm, I think I need a little bit more blue on her eye. I thought it was a lot at first. It looked like it was too dark, and now I'm thinking it's too light. And especially when I get her eyelashes on there, I think this is going to be too light. So I'm just slowly building this up because her eye is sitting in a socket, right? It is sitting in a socket. It's covered with uh, or surrounded by skin tones. So we need to get that in there. Now she's wearing makeup, so she has an eyeliner on here that's quite dark. And I'll need to put that in. Uh, just before I do though, before I put in her her lashes and stuff, which are the darkest, right? They're, they're quite dark. I'm going to establish the crease in her eyelid before I do that. So a little raw sienna. Permanent Alizarin Crimson, and I'm going to even put a little bit of uh, neutral tint into that to get a little bit more uh, dark, more shadow, more less less bright, right? So I'm going to be working on dry, and then I will soften. Now, while I have that color, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to dampen where her eyebrow is going to go. I'm going to ignore that hair there, that little hair wisp of hair that's coming down. I'm going to ignore that. We're going to pretend that I just um, that I just had that masked. Okay, we're just going to pretend that. So I'm going to take that neutral tint. raw sienna and um, alizarin crimson but more not more more uh, neutral tint than anything else all right so I'm gonna start off her eyebrow with a little bit of this darker browner shade and you see I'm putting it on wet because I want to keep this nice and soft looking to put eyebrows on just white skin looks so um, so harsh. It just looks like, uh, well, it looks like it's painted on. Right. I also feel like I'm going to use a little bit more shading around her eye here. So I'm going to come around her eye on this side. 
and I'm going to shade this before I start putting any of that darker makeup on. So this needs to be darker, but of course it needs to be softened. So I rinse my brush and I tickle all these edges to get those blending in. And I think I can go just slightly darker because I know that's going to look very, very light next to that uh, dark liner. And I'm just going to rinse and blot my brush and soften this into the rest of the skin tones. I'm going to use that same color on the inside of her tear duct. Okay, she's got a little tear duct here and that's a little bit darker. Keep building this up. I go in small increments. I know some of you are much bolder than I am. <laughs> Just put that color in and you're done. I'm more of a slow build kind of gal. And that's just the way I work. It's not necessarily the right way or the wrong way. It's just the way I work. Do I use a different brush to soften? or I, just, I usually just rinse my brush, but you could use a different brush. That would be perfectly fine. I just I don't like putting putting my brushes down to pick up a new brush or I might forget and picked up the wrong brush so I usually just use one brush uh, that's just kind of the habit I've gotten into but yeah there's nothing wrong with uh, with using two brushes if you want to use one for softening and one not. So let's cool that down, add a little more on there. Kind of surprising how dark I'm going, but it will um, eventually look like it's not too dark because of the dark that's going to go on top. So softening these edges once again. When I soften my edges, I'm not just using the tip of my brush to, you know, my brush handle up straight. I'm laying the brush down because it's dampening all the way out here. And then I don't have just a new hard line, right? I, it, it's too damp for that to make a new hard line. So I lay the brush down as I'm softening an edge. Make sure that the the side of the brush is sitting on the paper. I think I might use a little of that on her nose too, just on the underside of her nose. And soften that. And I'll find a couple of other places to put couple of little darks, um, just a little bit on her neck I'm just doing right now. But uh, yeah, so I will, I will now, I'm going to dry this well so that I can start putting in, you know, liner and lashes and things like that. And uh, maybe get into uh, even the teeth. <clears throat> I'm 
you know, a portrait like this, even just taking half of a face and, and just playing around with it, see what you can do with it. It's probably good practice. Um, what I don't recommend, um, and I'll, I'll say this for most people, it's um, when you're trying something new for the first time, don't plan for it to be a gift for somebody or something precious so you think you're going to hang on your wall. Do it as a practice. Like Just treat it like a practice. Let the mistakes happen if they happen. Learn from those mistakes. And then once you learn from those mistakes, you'll feel more confident when you're actually going to do your painting. But don't start off with, oh, I want to do a portrait of my uh, dad, but I haven't done a portrait in five years and you know I always struggle with hair and you know so don't sit down and say oh this is going to be the portrait I'm going to do <laughs> do a practice uh, you know that time isn't wasted even though you're not planning to frame that painting that that time is not wasted that's valuable time that you are learning so um, <laughs> don't be afraid to make mistakes I'm just gonna grab some clean paper towel because it's pretty wet now um, all right, so I'm going into, this is cooled down, I'm going to go into just neutral tint. Just neutral tint by itself. Now her lash, her eyeliner is pretty dark. So I'm going to follow right here and it gets thicker as it comes along. Now, I did put it on fairly heavy, but that's not heavy enough. So it's going to have to be a lot more solid than that. All right, so there's her. Still will need to go a little higher here, just a sliver. She's probably better at putting on her eyelashes than I am paint, or eyeliner than I am painting it. But all right, so we really don't see much in the way of the lashes other than uh, maybe just a few little hints uh, that are sticking out here and I'm looking carefully at the direction and I'm I've, I've taken this same brush and what I've done is I've can you see that I've flattened it see if I turn it one way it looks really wide and then I turn it the other way it looks really thin and so I'll use it like a little knife and I'll just sort of cut in all of those little lashes to get nice little fine fine lashes now lashes seldom if ever are perfectly spaced or all the same length um, it always looks really weird when you see <laughs> lashes that are look like you know a child's sun you know sunbeams right they just kind of go lines uh, little space line space line space line space and so on lashes are often Kind of this sort of thing. If if we could see more of her lashes, her lashes would probably be a little bit more like, you know, sometimes they would group together. You'd have long ones, you'd have short ones, and so on. They would be a little bit more arbitrary. They're not so. Um, they're not so uh, uh, stiff and organized and all exactly the same length. Unless they're fake eyelashes, <laughs> but. Now for lower lashes, let's talk about lower lashes for a second because with lower lashes, they're usually very subtle, very subtle. So my suggestion to you <laughs> would be to thin down that color a little bit. If you put it on really dark on something really light, now we did put this on something dark because she's got that strong eyeliner, but the lower lashes do not have that. So uh, we're going to dilute this neutral tint and do the lashes very light because I really don't want them to show up too much. Um, I'm just reading some of the comments. I've, I've never done a portrait, but I do wildlife and landscapes. The techniques are good for anything you paint. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, like any painting is good painting, right? Like you it's good experience in other words so you learn something and it, it crosses over from one thing to another I mean the techniques I used in her hair very much like what you might use on an animal's fur uh, but 
back to these small lashes. Okay, so the lower lashes, I really need to look at how small they are. I, they don't really come all the way over to the tear duct. They kind of start here, and I'm going very, hardly touching the paper, and they're very subtle. So the other thing is, is there's a little margin of skin. The eyelashes do not come from the eyeball. <laughs> they come from the lower lid and not right where it meets the eyeball. It comes out out there a little bit. There's a thickness um, that, that you use. I am using, the size I am using is a number six, but this is a little large probably for many of you to use. Uh, you might want to go to something much smaller or something with a really nice fine point. Like this, this is a Chinese brush uh, that someone gave me and it has like a point like a needle and I could get some really, really super fine lines if I needed to with this type of a brush. You know, and it would be quite easy because it has a very long, long tapered type of point. You might have a brush that comes to a nice point, uh, but it's not a long point, like a long tapered point. I used to have a brush that was called... I think it was called a long liner or something like that. And it really tapered to a, a, a gradual point, but very, very sharp at the end. Um, don't start with painting babies or small children if I've never painted portraits. It seems to be a trip to trip up so many other otherwise great painters. Yes, painting children are, are is more challenging or uh, people that look very youthful it's challenging because they, their skin is so flawless, right? So, you know, it's very hard to do flawless when you're not experienced. So it is a good idea. Maybe, maybe choose, maybe not an older person too, because then you have, then you have uh, uh, wrinkles and things like that to be worried about and how to approach those types of things. Um, but maybe somebody, you know, 30s or 40s would be a good, you know, practice point. Uh, What's I, oh, okay, so. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, so that's, that's, di that's the difficult part. With children being so, so young, so new, so flawless, is that it, it's hard to do it without making them look older. And so you really have to look close, close, close. Uh, reflecting light from a shirt, uh, how strong should the wash be? Um, well, it I would make it very light, <laughs> very thin. Uh, you you don't want to have just one color. Like say say I had a uh, or let let's say she had a, a really bright pink hair, right? So she has bright pink hair. It's reflecting pink on her face. I wouldn't do a, like a fuchsia color here and, and no skin tone under that. I'd put the skin tone on and then I would do the reflected color. Um, but they would be thin layers. So I want to come down to, uh, well, let's finish up the eye hair. Let's, let's finish up her eyebrow. And again, when I'm talking about thinning down your color and using a nice pointed brush. Now, if I actually see her her lashes, like the lines, the hairs of her eyebrows, uh, I can follow that contour. So they go up and back, up and back. But you really need to dilute this color, maybe even put it in in several layers. They're small hairs, so they overlap a lot. Because it keeps going up. I was trying to bring that down and it doesn't go that way. So as one layer dries, you can come in and add another layer because, you know, hairs go over top of other hairs and so on. And so I would build the brows up very lightly like that. Not Don't go in with real dark color. It looks like you know, you got a Groucho Marx kind of uh, effect when you do that.
yeah, could look very, very clown like if it is uh, painted on very dark. Um, so, as one layer dries, you can add a little bit more on if needed. Uh, blonder hair, like she has, I think her hair is colored, but uh, it is fairly blonde naturally, but her brows are a little bit darker. So, but like I said, every portrait, every portrait has its own unique set of challenges and uh, you know different hair colors different hairstyles different ages different lighting different clothing you know every portrait has so many different things it's very hard to say well here's here's your portrait uh, tutorial and now you'll know how to do all your portraits it's just not going to work that way all right so coming down to the mouth um, i need to come into some of this reddish color okay so i'm going to take that permanent alizarin crimson maybe a little raw sienna too just kind of the color i used for the lips a little bit of um, neutral tint right so that's going to dull this down and i need to get into her mouth a little bit so coming under that under that upper lip and the little gaps in between her teeth and the tricky part with these little gaps is getting the shape right without going over her um, her actual lower lip. You would need, you'd still need to maintain that straight line there. So you have to work very carefully with this. So I'm realizing I probably put her gum in the wrong place there, but we'll put that there, okay? And <clears throat> so with with this uh, lip color, I'm going to tone down that that back tooth. It starts to go back into the mouth, so it's starting to recede and disappear. And but to make it look like it's actually in the mouth, you need to dull it down as well. So I'm putting a little bit of that neutral tint in there and a little more neutral tint, a little less runny because I need to have a little bit of control here and I'm going to come into that area there. Now it starts to get a little bit soft at this point. I'm just looking at my photo right here. I don't want it to look like her mouth is a cardboard cutout. Her upper lip it's making a little bit of a shadow on her lower lip. So I'm going to soften right here. I have to put a little more color in, but it it's going to end up being a little bit softer right there. there go. Put that crease back in there too. I think that could be a little bit darker. Maybe not so hard though, so I'm going to soften that with my blotted brush. I just quickly blotted my brush. When I, you know, after a while, that softening, how to soften an edge, just becomes such a, uh, it's almost like a continuous motion because you just get so used to doing it um, really quickly after you put the color down that it becomes a little bit second nature, I guess. I'm going to get her lips a little bit stronger. Her her lipstick I think is a little bit darker. Her lip color is a little bit darker. I'm going to just put that in there. Soften this. Let's get a little more on there. But that has to be soft at, as it meets the skin outside the lip. You don't want to have just a hard cut, cardboard cutout line. A little bit softer there. And also the lower part of her lip here has got a little bit more color than I had. So I'm going to soften that right away. 
rinse and blot and then come in to soften. So that tone is getting a little bit better. Now her teeth look flat. Her feet, her teeth don't have any shape right now. They're, they're white, but they don't have any shape. So we had to shade the white of her eye. We also need to shade her teeth. So I'm going to come over to that, that little bit of a greenish color that I had mixed before and mix, mix a little of her skin tone in with it. So I get kind of a dull, neutral, almost a, a dull taupe kind of color. And I'm going to start getting, giving her just ever so slight color to some of her teeth, especially where her upper lip overlaps her, her teeth. So this little tiny bit of color is barely noticeable. I will bring that down between teeth because that's what makes them look like they're not um, perfectly uh, flat. They have to have a little contour to them. So that's hardly any color there. Maybe I'll put just a little more in just because I think it'll be easier for you to see on the screen. Put a little bit more in there. Um, and, and you can see the highlight left on the tooth, right? I know I didn't do her teeth right, the right shape. She's going to kill me if she sees this, but, um, but it's because some of the picture's missing and it's, and, and I had a little bit more space. So I'm, I'm inventing, but I know I did that wrong. Uh, that's funny, but the idea of how, how to do the teeth is there anyway. So I'm just lifting some of this off because I don't want any hard lines forming there. Just keeping that soft. And then I would just come in to do any touch-ups. So I'm going to put in a little bit more shading right here because she's got that other eyebrow coming in. And quickly rinse and blot and soften this edge. And I would just keep doing things like that, you know, like, does it need to be darker? I'll just, oh, sorry, I didn't even realize I wasn't on screen. But um, I would come in and, and build up things. So I put in a little bit of color here, and then I rinsed and blotted. Now, how successful you are probably depends a lot on how observant you are, really. Um, advice about practicing before planning... Oh, you like that advice. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I often have people bring, bring something to class and they say, yeah, I'm going to do this. It's, I'm going to be a gift for Christmas. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Because, you know, as soon as that happens, that person is not going to take any risks. They're not going to challenge themselves or uh, try anything different that makes them feel uncomfortable. And if you don't, what are you going to learn? Right? You, you have to get outside of your comfort zone to learn. So um, I have gone well over my time here, but let me zoom out so we can see how I did. Uh, there we go. That's what we have for today's demo. <laughs> we have her skin tones, and um, I didn't get into her clothing or anything like that, but uh, it was just the skin I wanted to finish anyway, the, the, the facial features. I could keep building that up a little bit more and, and so on. You know, I can see I can see immediately that, you know, some of these things need to get pushed back a little bit with a little more color. And, you know, I would just keep keep at it until I get all those values just the way I need them. So there's kind of a dark color there, that sort of thing. Push that back into a little bit more shadow. and so on and so I would build these things up uh, that little that little line there that makes her look like she's smiling right because that's that smile uh, when you get when you smile you crease that little spot on your face um, oh thank you <laughs> uh, all right so I don't think I have any other questions to be answered. So we'll wrap this one up and thank you very much for joining. If you liked it, you know what to do. You give me a little thumbs up there or um, put comments in the uh, 
below the video or share it. I love that. So anyway, uh, we will wrap it up and say, have a great week. Take care, everybody. Bye.